Hi booktube, Lynette here. Uh, it's just past midnight on the 9th of May so it's actually the start of the Tome Topple Readathon. This runs for two weeks and finishes on the 22nd of May and the aim of the readathon is to read books that have more than 500 pages or around 500 pages. I've done these before, uh, not with any great success, um, but the aim is to just read them. It's um, obviously we'd all like to think we could finish them, um, but that's not the aim. The aim is just to read them. Sam over at Thoughts on Tomes, who runs this, she does set other prompts for you to follow, but I don't really take any notice of them because I've I've got a few books that are over 500 pages um, and they're all ones that I want to read and I don't really feel like trying to fit them into specific genres because the the books that I've got that are more than 500 pages are all fantasy reads and they all need me to be in the right mood uh, to read them. Uh, in my May TBR I said which books I was planning on reading and after quite a bit of deliberation over the last couple of days I have decided to start with The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. This is the third book in the Wheel of Time series. At the end of the second book um, the Horn of Valair had been found and sounded and the heroes of old had been recalled to fight a battle. Uh, for the true born reborn dragon <clears throat> the new dragon hasn't actually been announced yet but I believe in this book this is where Rand really starts to come to terms with who he is and what's actually happening um, in his world and obviously how it's all going a bit wrong for him in some ways uh, he's got a lot of uh, realizations to make in this book and uh, I'm looking forward to reading it it qualifies for Tome Topple because it's 625 pages long. I'm not I'm I'm not going to read all of this. I've struggled with the first two books in the series. I've enjoyed them. They've both been three stars. Uh, but they, they're quite heavy. There's a lot of descriptive writing. And when I read these books, my reading speed goes down to about one page every two minutes rather than two pages a minute. Uh, so they do take me a while. So that's the one that I'm going to start with. Uh, like I say, it's nearly 10 past midnight now i've got a snack i've got a drink so i'm probably going to read this for half an hour and then settle down and go to sleep 24 hour readathons are not my thing so you won't find me staying up all night to read this um so i'm going to try and start with that one first i do have a second option though and that is uh fall's errand by robin hobb and that's the first book in her tawny man trilogy that's the third series in her realm of the elderlings series. I finished the second series last year and I've been itching to read the Tawny Man trilogy since. So if I'm struggling with this one uh, I've got that option to switch to. Um, I've only got those in ebook form um, because at the moment I haven't forked out for the whole set of 16 Realm of the Elderling books in one uh, which I'm hoping to do at some point this year because I'd like to own them all in the same covers. I did own some of them previously, but they're all in different covers because the covers changed in between publications. Um, so, yeah, so that's my plans. I've got to get up in the morning. I've got things to do in tomorrow morning. So um, I'll uh, I'll let you know how I get on when I get up in the morning, see how far I've got with this one. It'll probably only be about 10 pages, but we'll, I'll let you know. And I'll keep you updated and hopefully I can vlog the whole two weeks. So I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. Hi. Uh, just a quick update. It's now quarter past nine Saturday morning. I did read for about half an hour last night before I went to sleep. Um, and I managed to get through 20, 29 pages of The Dragon Reborn. Um, enjoying it so far. Uh We've had a short scene with um, the Children of the Light who are like, um, uh, well, they put themselves forward as a force for good in the world. Uh, but I think their ideas of what's light and what's dark are a bit t have gotten twisted over the millennia. Um, so they are on the hunt for Rand and Matt and Perrin. Um, and they're on the hunt for them, but well... 
because they think they're dark friends, but also because the overarching evil in the world um, also wants them found. So there's a, a double-edged sword there. Um, so I've just started a chapter that's being told from Perrin's point of view, and obviously he's still fighting with his own issues. Um, quite intrigued by it. Like I say, I've got a few things to do this morning, so I'm just going to go and have a shower now. And then I've got to pop to town and do our food shopping because I do all of that at the moment. Um, and then I've got a few things to do at home, but hopefully this afternoon I'll have a nice chunk of time where I can sit down and get into this a bit more. So yeah, I'll um, hopefully talk to you all a bit later on today. So it's Saturday afternoon and uh, I've done all of the uh, jobs I was going to do this morning. So I've now got some free time. It's about quarter to four. So I thought I'd settle down for an hour and read. Uh, I've got my cushions, you can see just behind me here, all set up on my bed. And I've got myself a nice big mug of tea. And my book. Uh, so like I said, last time I updated you this morning, I've got up to page 29. So I'm just going to read a few chapters now. Like I said, I've got an hour. Um and I'll maybe update you a bit later on. Okay, see you later. Hi Booktube, uh, it's still Saturday and this has to be a record. I've updated you three times in one day. Uh, it's actually nearly quarter to ten in the evening here now and um, I've actually decided to come to bed. Uh, I have been reading this afternoon. I haven't read very much. I've only read for about um, about an hour, hour and a half. And I've got through a few more pages, about 80 pages. Uh, at the moment, the story is all being told from Perrin's point of view, but I think we're about to switch to go to Egwene's point of view. And I'm enjoying it. I'm actually, it's, it's going quicker than the previous two books did at this stage. So I am finding that I'm enjoying it. Uh, it is, like I say, it is quarter to ten here, so I've made myself a cup of tea, I've got myself another snack, and I'm probably going to sit and read for another hour um, or so, uh, just to see how I get going. Um, I'm 114 pages in, uh, just over 100, 110 definitely pages in, so like I say, it is going really well, so I'm more than a sixth of the way through the book. Um, and the previous books, it's taken me a, more than a day to get that far in. So I'm hoping this series is starting to pick up now and that I'm going to start enjoying it much more. I'm probably not going to update you again this evening um, because it's going to be 11 o'clock or so by the time I finish reading um, and I shall just want to, to go straight to sleep rather than turn the camera on. So I shall probably update you in the morning. Um, I've got a couple of things I want to do in the morning before I can settle down to reading anyway. Um, and then tomorrow, because it's a Sunday, the way we eat, I probably, again, I probably won't get around to reading until late afternoon tomorrow. Uh, so I shall either come on and update you in the morning with what I've read this evening, or I shall probably wait and maybe update you later on tomorrow afternoon. So I uh, hope you're all keeping well and I will speak to you again. Hi Booktube, uh, just an update here. I uh, didn't update you at all yesterday, so it's actually Monday the 11th of May now. Um, I did get a really good chunk of reading done yesterday. I just forgot to come on and update. Um, I, I, ran, I had a few chores to do in the morning. I went for my run and then uh, had some bits of tidying and, and cleaning to do. And then I sat down with the book and forgot to update you. So I think when I put the book down on Saturday night before I went to sleep, I'd got to about page 165. And then with all the reading that I did yesterday, I am just over halfway through. Sorry. Um, so I'm still reading The Dragon Reborn. <clears throat> and I'm really enjoying it. This book it actually seems to be reminding me why I really enjoyed these books in the first place. I just 
I'm not able to put it down. Every second I have available to read, I've been reading it. At the moment, obviously, uh, the story is being told from Matt's point of view. Uh, we've spent a good chunk of time in Tar Valar, um, the White Tower with the Aes Sedai and with Egwene, Nineveh and Elaine. And they've been investigate doing some investigations into the Black Archer. They found some things out that they now need to investigate and they're roping Matt in to help them. Um, and Matt has come across a character from the first couple of books uh, that we thought was dead. Um, so we now know that he's not. <clears throat> he's very much alive. So, yeah, I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm hooked. Like I say, I'm about... With the reading that I did yesterday, I'm about halfway through. Um, I did have to stop for a little while yesterday. Uh, we, we had an update on the lockdown situation. Um, and I realised that I hadn't yet edited and... Um, uploaded the video that was supposed to go live this morning but I got that managed to get that done so that video is live um and then my brother messaged me to say ask if I'd watched the film Tolkien um about J.R.R. Tolkien and I hadn't so uh he told me it was on Sky available on Sky so I went into Sky and sat and watched that um and then that was like midnight last night so I went to sleep I wasn't going to do any more reading um but yes I've just got one or two things to do this morning and then the rest of the day is going to be reading and I don't think I'll finish this today um, but I think I'm going to get at least an another quarter of it read and then hopefully I can finish it tomorrow um, but I'll come on hopefully later on and let you know how I'm doing. Hi, um, so I think I only updated you once yesterday um, it was a bit of an odd day yesterday. We had an announcement about lockdown on Sunday evening, which left me a bit anxious and unsure. And then yesterday I was waiting to hear from my employer um, about how they plan to react to the announcement. Um, but thankfully they reacted in the way that I hoped they would. And um, they're being quite sensible about it because they're basing it on the amount of work that we've got rather than you know let's get everybody back to work and off the furlough scheme um so my reading was pretty sporadic yesterday uh but i did read some more um it's tuesday morning now it's nine o'clock i've got up i've had a run shower as you can see still got my hair in the towel um i haven't yet made my bed but i've got my second cup of coffee i'm gonna have something to eat in a minute and then i am probably gonna comb my hair out before it gets tangled up um, and then I'm going to sit down with the Dragon Reborn again. Um, I am almost three quarters of the way through this, just, I'm just under three quarters of the way through this so good bet that I'm going to finish it today if I get some decent reading time in. There's, we don't tend to watch TV during the day um, or if we do it's just the odd program and then we turn it off. Um, and there's only a couple of things we want to watch this evening as well. So I've got some really good reading time in here. So I am probably going to finish this today, uh, which is really good. Um, I'm enjoying this a lot, lot more. There is hardly anything around um, in this book. I think he's probably going to come more into the last quarter because I know that there's something that happens at the end which has to involve him. Um, but this book is all about Perrin and... Moraine and Egwene and Nineveh and Elaine and Matt uh, rather than rather than Rand um, and to be honest I find Rand I don't like Rand as a character he's a bit whiny um, whereas uh, well Matt can be a bit whiny as well um, but Perrin seems to be more like he kn he knows there's something happening to him and he's trying to deny it but he's getting on with it as well at the same time um, and he's just trying to find ways to block it so that it doesn't overtake him because he's seen the consequences of what could happen there. Uh, so he he's far more practical about the things that are happening to him, whereas Matt and Rand are a bit more whiny about it, and um, so they get on my nerves a bit more. Um, so I am enjoying this one a lot more than I was the, uh, the previous two books. So I'm looking forward to getting through this one, and I think I am going to be wanting to go on to The Shadow Rising, which is book four, but at the moment, I think if I did that, I'd probably burn out a little bit on them. Um, so, not sure. 
I'll make a decision after I finish this one what I do, whether I go on to the next one, because the next one is almost a thousand pages, so it will still fit for Tome Topple. And I'll just see where I go from there. So I may update you later. Um, I may not, but if not, I'll definitely come on tomorrow and just let you know if I finished and if I have what I plan on picking up next. So I will speak to you all later. Bye. Hi again. It's a bit later on Tuesday. It's actually just gone half past two in the afternoon and I have literally just finished The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. I've given this uh, three and a half to four stars. Um, it's much better than the previous two. As I've said over the last couple of days, I've been really flying through this one and it's really kept my attention unlike the other two. And as I said earlier today, I really think that is because there's hardly anything of Rand in this book. Um, I'm finding Egwene and Elaine and Inave and Perrin and Fael, who he's now met, um, and Moraine and Lan and Loyal, far more interesting than Rand's story. Um, I think possibly because I know that ultimately that you know where this is where the story is going for Rand in the end by the end of the whole series. But yes, really, really enjoyed this. Uh, it was really well paced, apart from the last couple of chapters when everything happened. Um, it was really, really well paced and I really did like that this time round. I felt the others were a bit slower paced, a bit stop start in places as well. Um, and The Great Hunt, the previous book to this, had a big jump in time as well uh, towards the end of it, which I don't think helped me. This is really, really well done. Um, you can see how the threads of the story are really starting to spread out now and probably not quite as much so as they do in later books. Uh, but you're getting other characters coming in. So we've got the Aiel have now come into it. It's always been hinted that Rand is one of them by birth, um, not by upbringing, but by birth. And... Perrin is, like I, said, like I said earlier, Perrin is learning to come to terms with what he is. And right at the end of this book, he does embrace part of what he is uh, and he uses it to help um, himself. Matt, um, he wasn't quite as whiny in the second half of this book, but he he is the most chauvinistic of the three boys, I think. There is quite a sense of, of chauvinism between the, the, the three boys, between Perrin, Matt and Rand, um, they do think of women as being weaker than them. Uh, but I do like that, to, especially towards the end of this book, the the last couple of chapters, the exchanges between Matt and Egwene and Nave, especially because they all came from the same village. Uh, the the fact that they they very much look at him as if to say, you know nothing, Matt, when, he, when he, he's having his... Uh, little moments of chauvinism um, are brilliant. So I'm really, really enjoying that. I'm not sure that I'm quite ready to move on to The Shadow Rising. It is lingering in the back of my mind that I want to carry on with it and, and carry on with the story. I may do, I may not. I had put this down as the first book that I wanted to read for Tome Topple, but I'd also put down that I wanted to pick up another series as well. And that is the Tawny Man trilogy by Robin Hobb. I've been thinking about this series as well since the late last year when I finished the previous um, trilogy that she set in the same world that these are in. Uh, she, it's called The Realm of the Elderlings. And she's got, I think, in total five uh, series, uh, four trilogies and one quadrilogy that are all set in this wider realm um, but then each individual set of books has its own story and its own place in the world, um, which starts with the Farseer trilogy, which deals with Fitz um, and his place in, in this world, uh, and then moves on a bit further down the coastline and deals with the Live Ships Traders trilogy. And then the third trilogy, which is the Tawny Man trilogy, flips back again to Fitz and also more closely this time his ties with another character from that first series The Fall and I, like I say I've been thinking about this series for such a long time um, that I had put this down as the next books if I didn't pick up The Dragon Reborn it was going to be those books I started Tome Topple with so 
I really want to move on to those as well. Um, so I'm probably going to sit on this for maybe half an hour or so now. Have a think, update Goodreads, etc. and everything on, on The Dragon Reborn and then see how I feel when I finish. I'm I'm like I say, I'm I'm not quite ready to move on to the Shadow Rising, so I think it probably will be the Tawny Man trilogy. Um I may not update you again today, um, uh, but if I do make any decisions then I'll I'll give probably give you a brief update before I go to bed. But if not, then I'll update you um maybe in a day or two's time when I've made that decision. So I'll speak to you all again soon. Morning booktube, it's a now Thursday the 14th of May. I didn't update you at all yesterday. I did hardly any reading after I last updated you on Tuesday afternoon um, and between and up to this morning. I think I've only read about 100 pages but I did decide to read Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. I'm really enjoying it. I'm still getting back into her style of writing so I'm only 100 pages in like I say and it takes me uh, a good couple of hundred pages to get back into her writing and get back into her style and I'm re at the moment she's reacquainting you with um some characters from her first trilogy so we've obviously we we meet Fitz um but we've been introduced to a new character Hap um although I can't remember if he runs all the way through this one or if he's just someone that's in the beginning of this book and we've re-met Starling and we've re-met Chade and uh, now where I'm up to Fitz and the Fall have been reunited so the story is now going to start because the Fall is very much involved in the whole of this next trilogy. However I won't be able to read this morning, um, it's actually quite late in the morning, it's about quarter past eleven um, because I'm going to have to go to town this now once I get dressed uh, because one of my little monsters decided uh, that he wanted to eat scones sometime between 4am this morning and 8am this morning when my mum got up, so between me going to sleep and my mum getting up. Um, <clears throat> if I can just show you. It's this little angelic looking creature here. He looks like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth, but I'm fairly certain he's the one that jumped up on the side, knocked off the scones so that he and his brother and sister, his sister who is also curled up looking like butter wouldn't melt, um, <clears throat> could nibble on them. So mum and I have no scones in the house now, so I'm going to go to town and replace those. Uh but also I thought I'd just let you know what I'd started reading because I did say I would Wednesday afternoon but also I had some book mail. I opened it off camera because my mum wanted to see what it was I'd received but I um, went online last week uh, to my favourite bookshop Waterstones in the UK and I ordered Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I have already read them both. Um, I read Strange the Dreamer in February and Muse of Nightmares in April uh, but I loved them so much I wanted to have my own copies and I wanted to have paper and ink copies not ebook copies um, because again I really think that these will be books that the next generation will enjoy so I wanted to have copies that I could pass on to them and lend to them um, in future years so I've got to find room for these on my shelf. Um, also another reason why I'm probably not going to get started on reading very early today is I couldn't sleep last night, I was really really struggling so I started um, doing some organisation on my Kindle, it's already pretty organised, I don't know why I think I need to reorganise it uh, but I've started by going through, I, I have my Kindle books in collections and when I buy a Kindle book I put it into a collection for the year that I bought it <clears throat> um, and also an unread, so like um, any books I've bought in 2020 will be go into 2020 unread and then they'll go into books bought in 2020 and then they'll go into, so anything I've bought in May goes into books bought in May 2020 uh, so that I can keep track of when things were bought and try and occasionally I go through a phase of trying to read the books that have been on my Kindle the longest, uh, been on my TBR the longest. So I was um, inspired by a video I saw posted online yesterday to do a couple of videos which will probably go up maybe 
June now, um, but I'm looking at doing those. And I needed to get all my books in order uh, that I'd purchased them to know which were the actual oldest ones on my TBR. So I started doing that and I got up to about 2019 uh, before I thought, OK, I could probably try and go to sleep now. And that was about four o'clock this morning. So I want to finish that today um, because 2019 and 2020, the organisation, I've not been quite so on top of putting things where they need to be on my Kindle uh, so I can keep on top of that. So I shall be doing that um, this afternoon, early this afternoon, uh, so that that is all done and up to date and everything's in order. And then I can actually start working on the video that I or a couple of videos that I want to do um hopefully for june so that's my update for this morning um i'll try and update you again a bit later on today might be this evening now when i go to bed um and i'll uh, let you know how i'm getting on okay bye Hi again, it's actually Friday now, uh, it's actually midday on Friday, um, although I got up at 8 o'clock, it's taken me a while to get moving this morning. I went for my run this morning and then when I got back I actually sat and read for a little bit and then I went and had my shower as you can see, and my hair is still soaking wet. Um, I've been trying to let my hair dry naturally during the lockdown uh, just to give it a break because normally I um, dry it with a hairdryer and then straighten it and when lockdown started I was halfway between haircuts um, so I thought it would be a good time to actually just give it a break from all the heat styling that it has and uh, and then hopefully by the time I can get my hair cut again um, it won't be so damaged uh, as it normally is um, but I've got a really good hairdresser and she, she'll just chop a load off anyway uh, but yes yeah, so it's midday I'm filming in a slightly different location I'm in the living room this time my mum has actually popped out to run a couple of errands and to get some lunch because our nearest fish and chip shop has started opening up again uh, so we're going to treat ourselves to fish and chips for lunch so she's gone off to run some errands and to get some lunch. So I have just made myself a coffee and I've got my Kindle so that I can continue with reading Fool's Errand. I'm roughly 250 pages in, I think, to it now. Um, and it's really started going. Uh, fits, um, there's been an... A message come for Fitz that means he's been recalled to his old life albeit he's not known who he is in that old life because supposedly he's dead and obviously this is 15 years after the end of the Farseer trilogy in which he, his story was first told 
So he's not really recognised. Obviously, members of the court have changed. So he's now obviously trying to find out what's going on. There's been an event that's happened and he has been called back to try and work out what's happened and to recover a pretty important person. So getting quite intrigued by the story now. Um, the skill and the wit are all involved as they were before. There's lots of animosity towards those who are witted uh, or have old blood, um, as it's called. And obviously he's got to negotiate around that. Um, at the moment, he's separated from his bonded animal. So uh, we don't know how that's going to affect him being in Buckkeep now. But yes, I'm, I'm getting really intrigued by it. I'm really being drawn back into her world. I'm glad I picked it up. And I'm going to try and get a bit more reading done now. So I will hopefully update you all later. Hello again. And I'm sorry I haven't updated you um, anymore today. Uh, I've just pretty much been reading and procrastinating and reading a bit more um, since I updated you this morning. It's actually now midnight going into Saturday the 16th of May. And I've literally five minutes ago finished Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. Uh, which was the book that I was reading. Um, and I've finished week one of Tone Topple and I finished two books. So feeling really, really good about that. Um, I'm going to do a proper wrap up in the morning, uh, but I just thought I'd pop on and just let you know, uh, Fool's Errand was the first book in the third series in Robin Hobb's Realm of the Elderling series. And uh, this book re returns to the story of Fitzger, Bory, Farseer, Fitz and the Fool. And in this book, uh, Fitz is recalled to his old life in Buckkeep uh, because the prince has gone missing and Chade and the Queen only trust, really trust him to actually uh, search for the prince and bring him home safely because uh, of Fitz's wit and his skill that he has. Um, and it's the story of how he gets recalled and then sets off to find the prince to bring him home. And obviously that then, it's got a pretty sad ending. Uh, it's a bit of a tragedy for, for Fitz along the way. And... Um, it's resulted in some tears and my cat deciding he doesn't want to sleep on the bed next to me because I keep trying to hug him, <laughs> um, which is what I do when sad things happen in books. But uh, yeah, I, I'm thoroughly drawn back into this world and I'm looking forward to getting up in the morning and getting all my chores and errands and filming the wrap up for this out of the way so that I can actually get on and move on to the next book, which I think is The Golden Fall. Um, because I'm really enjoying being back in this world. Um, and I'm really hoping that I can get the next two books, actually, this whole trilogy finished in this in this time topple and have a really successful time topple for a change. So, yeah, so, it, like I say, it's midnight now, so I'm going to put the phone away and the e-reader on charge and I'm going to go to sleep. And I will wrap this up properly in the morning. Hi booktube, Lynette here and this is the wrap up to week one of Tome Topple. Uh, I had a very successful first week of Tome Topple and I actually managed to finish two books in total. Uh, and those two books in total were came to 1,217 pages and I was reading for just over 26 hours in total for the whole week, for the whole of the seven days, first seven days. Uh, so the first so the first book that I read uh, for Tome Topper went really, really quickly. And I was really surprised by this because I've been having some issues with this series. And this book was The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. This is the third book in his Wheel of Time series. And it's all about, this time, Perrin and Matt and Egwene and Nynaeve and Elaine. It follows them rather than following Rand. And I think that's probably part of... I've said in the vlog, I think that was probably part of why I enjoyed it more. I find Rand a bit whiny at the moment. Uh, so I think I enjoyed this book a lot more because there he was in it for a couple of chapters at the beginning and he was in it right at the very end, the big 
build up at the end and other than that I didn't see him at all so I quite enjoyed that but I really surprised myself and it did actually leave me a bit torn because I hadn't intended to read The Shadow Rising yet I was going to leave that for another month uh, possibly even for July uh, but when I got to the end of this I was like craving a little bit more um, so I gave this one three and a half stars to four stars and thoroughly enjoyed it and I am actually looking forward to moving on to The Shadow Rising and I may move on to that a lot quicker than I originally intended to uh, because uh, that was supposed to be a July read but that could now be bumped up to June. So the second book that I finished in the week uh, took me a little bit longer, I, I, I took me a little bit of time to get into it uh, but it was one that I was really anticipating reading and getting into back into the story and that is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in her Tawny Man trilogy and the Tawny Man trilogy is the third series in her Realm of the Elderlings overarching series. I really love uh, Robin Hobb's writing. I first read this book about 15 years ago and her stories are ones that have they've not stayed with me because actually I couldn't really remember a lot of what happened in this book. Uh, but as it was going, I did start to remember a little bit more. But I was pleasantly surprised because I had forgotten so much and I, I did actually really, really enjoy it. Uh, this book is the story of how Fitz, who is the main character from the first trilogy in this set, is being called back to his old life. Um, albeit he has to disguise himself as someone else because... If you've read the previous books, then you know that actually he's no longer known within Buckkeep. And if he was to be known, then uh, bad things would happen to him. But in this series, he's being called back by those who know who he is and who still love him. And he's been called back because the Prince of Buck, um, the Prince of the Realm, has actually gone missing. And the Queen suspects foul play. And as far as she's aware, the only person that can help her is Fitz. So she recalls him via Chade uh, and also via the Fool um, to come back to Buck and um, Buckheap and to resume um, in a way his old life to help find the prince. And it's the story of what happens from there. It's all, again, based around the wit and the skill uh, because he has the wit and it also turns out that possibly the prince has the wit as well. Only the wit is frowned upon um, in this world. Uh, it's seen as beast magic and horrible magic. And those that have it are evil. So it's also a fight against, of good against evil. It's a story in itself. It doesn't really... It's only the very ending, I think, that leads you towards the next book in the series. There doesn't seem to be any real overarching part of it so I'm not quite sure where the next book is going to go I know that there is a betrothal in here which I think is what's going to form the basis of the next story uh, but I'm actually looking forward to finding out where finding out where that goes I did read the whole trilogy the first time around but not a lot of it stuck with me um, like the previous trilogy did so I'm actually looking forward to getting back into it and that is going to be the first read of the second week of Tome Topple is the next book in the series. So that was my very successful first week of Tome Topple. Um, and I will hopefully be putting this up very, very soon. And I'm going to vlog the second week as well. And I will speak to you all soon. So happy reading all. Hope you're all doing well. And bye.